have to fear him. In war, fear there is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor, for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome to the intersection of faith and politics. This is Wall Builders Live. Thank you for joining us. You can visit online at wallbuilders.com and wallbuilderslive.com. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton. And, uh, David, everything that we address is from both a biblical and a historical point of view. And without that biblical point of view... Uh, you lose the culture. We move down a secular slide that will take away all of those freedoms we hold so dear. And I remember you giving a presentation last year at Patriot Academy where you you went through some of those basics from the Bible that helped to give us our nation, and you pointed out, frankly, how little we know about the Bible these days and how important it is for us to study that, even more so than studying the Constitution and Declaration and everything. We need to know where those freedoms came from first biblically. Yeah, and that's the problem we have today is churches become so irrelevant and so unpractical, we no longer associate the Bible with things. One of the things we post on the website is a bunch of old sermons. And one of the sermons up there is in 1806, they had a solar eclipse. So we preached about solar eclipses. Now, I would challenge anybody today to name me two Bible verses on solar eclipses. I, I don't think it can be done. I don't think I don't think a pastor today could name me Bible verses on solar eclipses. Maybe they could. Uh, you know, maybe I'm being too pessimistic on this, but there's also a sermon up there from 1755. They had an earthquake in New England. So the sermons on earthquakes, it was a five-part sermon. Now, name me enough verses in the Bible to cover five-part sermon on earthquakes. Um, just, I mean, we, we have sermons up there. They opened the Great Bridge, 1805, opened the Great Bridge over the Connecticut River. So it's a sermon on architecture. Got an 1851 sermon on the laying of the transatlantic cable across the, the ocean. So you have that one. There, there's a 18, uh, 18, what is it, 1841 sermon on the discovery of a new planet. I think it was Uranus. Uh, there is an 1845 sermon on railroads. Uh, you know, I just, I've never heard sermons like that in my life, but they used to say whatever is in the headlines, we need to look at from a biblical perspective. Today, we get a pretty steady dose of the same kind of stuff, just in a different version every week, and it's not, not practical like it was. And so I think that's one of the reasons that Bible reading is on the decline. Uh, I will point to what's happened last year in Norway. Uh, Norway is considered to be probably one of the three most secular nations in the world, Scandinavian nation. And in Norway, the number one book, best-selling book last year was the Bible. And the reason was the Norway Bible Society, as something would happen in the newspaper, they would put up Bible verses that dealt with that issue, but not tell you it was from the Bible. And the country is so secular, they didn't know it was from the Bible. So if it was something military, they'd put up some military wisdom out of the Bible. If it was on taxes, or if it was on economics, or on debt, or on family, or on marriage, or whatever it was, they'd, they'd put up statements out of the Bible. And people got so enthralled, they said, this is good stuff. This is really great advice. And they kept demanding to know where it came from. And finally, they said, what's out of the Bible? And people said, that's the Bible? My gosh, we want a copy of that. And so the, the Bible became the number one best-selling book in Norway last year. Uh, not quite that way in America. And so really, our lack of knowledge of the Bible, and particularly our approach to the Bible, we think is a spiritual devotional book. And, and we don't see, the, the, for example, historically, the five Bible verses on which the free market system was built in America I bet you most folks cannot name those five Bible verses. They can't name the seven types of government that are seen in the Bible and why the founding fathers picked a Republican form of government, nor the three Bible verses that show a Republican form of government. I mean, that, that type of stuff is what we used to do in previous generations, and it's something we've got to get back to today. But we've made Bible studies so difficult, so complicated, and so irrelevant to where we are uh, that we thought, you know, it'd really be good to have somebody on to talk about how the Bible can be easily assessed, easily used, and how you can get great information out of it that becomes practical. And, of course, Scott Lindsay is the guy who fits that bill. Logos Bible Software, it's a great tool, and it'll help you to make it practical to your life. Scott Lindsay will be with us when we return right here on Wall Builders Live.
This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Joseph Story is one of the most important names in American jurisprudence. Not only was he placed on the U.S. Supreme Court by President James Madison, but he also founded Harvard Law School and authored numerous legal works on the Constitution. While today's revisionists claim that the goal of the First Amendment was absolute religious pluralism, Justice Joseph Story vehemently disagreed. He declared, The real object of the First Amendment was not to encourage, much less to advance, Mohammedanism or Judaism or infidelity by prostrating Christianity, but was to exclude all rivalry among Christian denominations. According to founder Joseph Story, Christianity, not pluralism, was the goal of the Founding Fathers in the First Amendment, for only a Christian nation is tolerant and thus is truly pluralistic. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1 800 8 Rebuild. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Our guest today has been way too long since we've had him, Scott Lindsay from Logos Bible Software. Scott, always good to have you, brother. Yeah, good to be back. Man, we just wanted to get an update. In fact, it, it, it's funny. David had just said we got to get Scott back on, and then we had a, a family in town uh, uh, visiting with us this weekend, and you know, my, my brother's got his uh, his iPad out, and he's he's uh, all working on his logo software. He's like, have you ever seen this Logos Bible software? <laughs> I said, yeah, I've seen it just a little bit. Incredible. Anyway, he loved it, and uh, it was just cool to think about, hey, I'm going to have Scott on this week. So glad to have you back and want to get some updates on what's going on with you guys. See, and I've never even met your relative there, and I already think he's brilliant. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, well, he's much more brilliant with logo software than he ever was without, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, and that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's a huge, huge benefit to anyone that wants to study God's Word and actually get into a, a deeper understanding of, of, of what's there and have an easier time at getting to the information. Yeah, you know, I, this is my 17th year with Logos, and I would say the one thing that I've seen over the last couple of years is just how digital people's lives have become. I mean, you, you can't walk anywhere with somebody without a handheld, you know, checking email, on the Internet, tweeting, Facebooking, whatever, and yet sadly – our engagement with God's Word statistically is on a serious decline. And so one of the passions of Logos is, you know, if, that, if that's you, if your life right now is, is part of the digital world, why not use the latest and greatest technology to study God's Word? I actually think there's no greater use of technology than digging into Scripture, and that's what we're all about. Well, you know, you you mentioned how how it's declining. I mean, when you look at the the just, I don't even know a nice way to say it. Just our ignorance. I mean, in my own. I mean, we we just don't know God's word like we did two hundred years ago as a nation. It, it, you know, it it just isn't. It isn't. Uh, I don't know if we're lazy or if it's just we're so busy and it got pushed out of the way. But all the data and all the polling, you know it better than I do. I mean, where do we stand right now as a nation in terms of our just our biblical knowledge? Well, every denomination I work with, and you know, Logos has relationship with every major denomination. I, I don't think anybody's painting a nice picture. Uh, it's it's a really it's a really bad snapshot of where we are. I mean, we we simply don't even know the basics of the faith anymore. You you say the word atonement uh, to the average believer today, and I I'm really scared of what you know what will be the answer to a very very foundational doctrine of our faith. Um, and and here's the here's the scariest thing. Even as a parent, I have teenagers. Kind of the knee jerk reaction now is, you know, I might not have the answer in my head, but I've got search engines like Google or what have you, and I can get that answer. And as you know, that's not always the best place to get biblical answers for anything. As a matter of fact, I think that should be our last resort. And one of the nice things about Logos is we're talking about trusted scholars. I mean, we obviously have a great relationship with wall builders and your library of materials, but Dr. Norm Geisler, uh, I was just with Ravi Zacharias last week in Atlanta. I mean, we're, we're trying to bring to the table uh, kind of the you know alive and with Jesus now the 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 fathers of the faith uh, to get 
really solid theology and biblical answers uh, in a convenient means. Yeah, you nailed it, man. I think, in fact, I remember just, man, it was probably five, six years ago, uh, a young person at, at, at Patriot Academy was given a, a presentation and said, people, our generation is now going to Google for truth. Mm-hmm. And that scared me to death. I thought, wow, that, if that's our source now, and hey, man, it's quick and it's easy. If that's our source, then where are we headed? Yeah, I actually, uh, I had sabbatical uh, maybe three, four years ago. One of the nice benefits of being here as long as I have is after 10 years, uh, Logos is very gracious and gives you a 30-day go hang out with the family, you know, and have sabbatical. And one of the books I read uh, was called The Dumbest Generation. And it was out of, uh, I think, Emory University, a professor there, and he was just looking at all the latest statistics and Kind of the cliche that we hear is we live in the the smartest age. I mean, the access to information today is just never been seen before. But the point this professor was trying to make is there's no knowledge that actually resides in a person's brain anymore because we have taken the excuse that I don't really need to know anything because I can get the answers. And there is a small hint of truth to that, but I think there's a great danger in that because I think as a believer, you need to know the basics of the faith. You need to give a ready defense uh, for Christ Mm. uh, because we live in a very secularized uh, culture that, you know, are going to ask questions, and you better be prepared to give them a biblical answer. Man, that is so true. Be ready to answer. I mean, that's uh, that, that's one of the great benefits of being able to dive in more, not just, again, here we would have, with Logos, at least we do have the tools at our fingertips, but it gives you a chance to go in and study and actually store that knowledge in your brain as well, so you can be ready to answer even when you don't have the iPad with you. Scott, you got to take a quick break. When we come back, tell us a little bit more about how to use Logos and and for folks that haven't heard of, about it, the different uh, the different vehicles. I mean, used to first time I had you on, we were just talking computers. Now it's you can get it on your phone, you can get it on your iPad, you can do do it just about anywhere. Stay with us, folks. We're talking about Logos Bible Software. Scott Lindsay, our guest, back in a moment, right here on Wall Builders Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. The key to a self-governing nation is self-governing people. And the key to personal self-government is to live by the standards in God's Word. If someone cannot control himself by those standards, then our Constitution certainly will be unable to restrain him. Understanding this, John Adams declared, We have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Greed ambition, revenge, or seduction would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams believed that successful government rested not upon our great Constitution, but rather upon moral and religious people. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Scott Lindsay's back with us here, and we're talking about Logos Bible Software. And a lot has changed, Scott. I don't, I don't even know how long it's been. The first time I had you on was probably, man, what, six, seven years ago? It's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's probably been two, three years since I've uh, been on the radio with you guys. Oh, I hope it hadn't been that long, but it may have been. But, you you know, the first time you were on, it was strictly a, a computer was the only way to use uh, Logos. But now... You've got I, I use it on my iPhone, so my I'm betting you can use it on other applications as well. Yeah, you know, before we went to air, I was just telling you the growth we're seeing. I mean, we're two million users now worldwide, about four hundred and fifty employees actually hiring a hundred more people right now. That's the kind of growth we're seeing. And when people ask me, Wow, in this economy, what what would be the reason you think for the growth you're seeing? I actually think it's the mobile side. You know, for the last 24 years, we've been building desktop tools uh, for pastors and people leading Bible studies. But I think the growth that we're seeing is from the person, 
you know, that's been walking with Jesus for a la- for two, three, four years that just wants to know the Bible better and wants answers on their iPhone or their Android. So we've got all the bases covered. We're Mac, PC, iPhone, uh, Android, tablets. Uh, I probably use Logos now about 50% of the time on my mobile device because I'm just a busy guy traveling all over the place. And, it, you know, it, it really is a peace of mind for me to know that maybe I don't have the answer to a question sitting next to somebody on a plane that, you know, uh, d- doubts inerrancy or other uh, key uh, pillars, again, of the, of the Christian faith. Uh, you know, to to know that on my iPad I can get a pretty solid answer in a nanosecond. I mean, that that's just great. Now, now, now give me just a a, a um, uh, kind of a thirty thousand feet view of what's available because it's not we're not just talking here about having you know three or four versions of the Bible. It's the library as well to back that up. Give me a how, how do you even describe how big it is and what's available there? Yeah, so we'll we'll give out a special website that we set up for the Wall Builder listeners. But when they go there, they can actually see a demonstration of Logos. And I love being introduced at a conference because as soon as my name is thrown out there with the word software, I can see people looking for exits, <laughs> like how do I get out of this room fast <laughs> enough? But literally within a minute or two, they're blown away by how easy it is and how fast it is to dig into the scripture. So for example, when you open it up on your desktop, all you need to know is what topic you want to study, atonement, marriage, baptism, whatever topic, or the passage, Romans 8, Psalms 23. Type either one of those, click one button, and Logos literally does 50 hours worth of biblical research in about five seconds. It literally reads your library and categorically puts your commentaries and your maps and your visualizations and your cross-references. You know, because a a stat that I stumbled upon recently is if somebody just took 15 minutes out of your Bible study per week and wrote down everything you do in paper, what you will discover is about 90% of what you think is Bible study is not Bible study. What it actually is is the process. It's getting up. It's going to the shelf. It's looking up the cross-reference. It's checking up that on that Greek word where Logos automates that process. So 15 minutes in Bible study in Logos is actually 15 minutes digging into the Word of God. I've had several people uh, you know, say to me before, man, I wish I knew Greek or I wish I could study the original. Uh, with Logos, you can. You, just, you can click on the word and go find what the meaning of that word is. Yeah, you're reading in your English Bible and Logos. You float your cursor on any word. You want to know what is the Greek or Hebrew for this word, and instantly there's a window that changes with all the Greek word study information. It pronounces the word for you. It tells you what the word means in context. It helps you with the morphology. And that I get most excited when I'm at a lay conference because a lot of people think, you know, all that Greek Hebrew stuff, that's just for the pastor. I say, no, 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 it's not. Actually, you're not even really doing Bible study until you start digging into the original languages. And so one of the great benefits of Logos is how easy it is to do that. What's the, you know, if I know a listener's got to be thinking at this point, okay, man, this sounds too good to be true. I couldn't possibly afford it. How do I find out how to get it? What's the website you were talking about? You set up a special, a special offer for our listeners. Yeah, so if they go to Logos, L-O-G-O-S, Logos.com forward slash wall builders, uh, they'll see about five of our different collections. We have numerous, but those are top-selling five collections. There's a demo that they can watch to actually see it in action and how this is going to benefit them uh, with their Bible studies and a special discount that we're only giving to the Wall Builders uh, listeners. Uh, and also a monthly payment. If you want to just kind of spread this out over 12 months, you'll immediately start downloading. But Again, for budgeting purposes, it might be just a little bit easier, you know, to pay this over a 12-month period. And and when you get the software, if you um, is there a way for you and your spouse to to share it? Do you have to? Is there a license for each? How do you do that? So we're very strict on the sharing issue because basically you are buying a library, and so these are all copyrighted resources. And just like you can't go to a photocopy machine and photocopy something and give it out to five people at church. In essence, you're buying a digital library. However, the Bible says that a man and a woman in marriage are one, and we don't mess with that. So 
husbands and wives can share, which is a great benefit of purchasing Logos. Uh, and there's no limit to the computer. So if someone listening buys Logos and has two desktops, three Androids, an iPhone, and you, you know a lot of people are there today, you can load it on any device that you own because you actually own this library. One thing that blew me away, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, but when I'm researching or working on a new book, the way that you guys have it set up where – uh, it basically, you know, drags your footnote over for you and, and, and does all of that. It does that work for you. So even for students that are writing papers and trying to, you know, go find an original source, you guys have a great system. It, it, it's that back end of Logos that's so amazing when you're trying to write a paper or write a book, and it, and it just does your footnote for you. Yeah, you highlight any text. So if, let's say you're in a commentary and there's a paragraph and you're thinking, oh, I need to bring this over to my sermon, my teaching, my paper, my homeschool assignment. You bring that over to your document and instantly at the bottom of the page is the cited reference. And you can go in there and tweak. I want it Turabian, SBL, APA. And now I'm saying those words and there's some students now drooling because <laughs> I just mentioned all those different uh, formats. And the other new feature with Logos 5, which is our latest and greatest, it now will actually help you create a bibliography. So it's not just citing anymore, uh, but it'll actually help you create, you know, at the back of the paper, all your cited resources. That's a brand new feature. Wow. Now, cool stuff, man. It's uh, and, and you do classes, right? I mean, if people want to learn how to use it, there's tools for teaching you how to get to even some of the fancier features. Yeah, if you go to Logos.com, at the very top of the page is a support tab, and we have literally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars creating free videos on how to use it on your iPhone, how to use it on the Kindle Fire, how to use it on a Mac, a PC. And so there really is no excuse once somebody buys Logos within 30 days to be doing the best Bible study they ever thought was was possible because of this tool. Great stuff. Logos.com forward slash wall builders. They've uh, made a great offer there on the uh, website for you, our wall builders listeners. And there's a coupon code there that you can use. Scott, always great having you, man. Appreciate you coming on and appreciate the great work you guys are doing to help educate our nation in the word of God. Thanks for having me. Back in a moment with David Barton. Have you ever wanted to learn more about the United States Constitution but just felt like, man, the classes are boring or it's just that old language from 200 years ago or I don't know where to start? People want to know, but it gets frustrating because you don't know where to look for truth about the Constitution either. Well, we've got a special program for you available now called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. And it's actually a teaching done on the Constitution at Independence Hall in the very room where the Constitution was framed. We take you both to Philadelphia, the Cradle of Liberty and Independence Hall, and to the Wall Builders Library, where David Barton brings the history to life to teach the original intent of our founding fathers. We call it the Quick Start Guide to the Constitution because in just a few hours through these videos, you will learn the Citizen's Guide to America's Constitution. You'll learn what you need to do to help save our constitutional republic. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's going to inspire you to do your part to preserve freedom for future generations. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. You can find out more information on our website now at wallbuilders.com. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here at Wall Builders Live. And uh, special thanks to Scott Lindsay and Logos uh, for giving us a discount. We appreciate them doing that for our, our Wall Builders listeners and encourage you to check out that website at logos.com forward slash wall builders and look at some of those options for being able to uh, get the word of God in your heart and get your uh, children educated on on uh, the history that's right there. That, uh, that, you know, David, you've got all, all of your books and DVDs and everything is available there in the Logos Library. It's a great way to really study both faith and politics just like we do here on the show it is and we and i would encourage folks to do exactly what the founding fathers regularly did and that's read through the bible once every year and so logos help you do that it'll also help you find applications uh there's a lot of good resources there look up all the bible verses that deal with economics look up all the bible verses that deal with family look up all the bible verses that deal with with job look at all the bible verses that deal with education you know go through and start doing things like that um, as Scott pointed out, there's Bible readings on the decline in America. And, and, and if it is, 
then America cannot be maintained as the form of government she's had because so much of what we have was built out of the Bible. Uh, it's quite remarkable how many of our presidents are the ones who used to encourage everybody to read the Bible. As a matter of fact, National Bible Reading Week was started by Fre- President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and he actually called on all Americans to read the Bible through as a nation between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Get in the Bible, study. That's Franklin Delano Roosevelt doing that. You know, you, you don't even hear most pastors do that today. And, and so our knowledge of the Bible has, has dropped so rapidly, and we cannot survive as a nation if we don't know where we came from, and that's out of the Bible. So uh, Scott's been very gracious to, to give this account, but... You know, he, he's right. Is, is the serious reading of God's words on the decline? We can change that. Technology helps us do that. Um, we can get through this thing once every year. We don't need to be going to Google for answers to our faith. We need to be going to stuff like Logo Software. Yeah, it's a, it, and it's and it's easy to use. I mean, it's uh, it can be used for a lot of different things. Not only your Bible study, but just research. Uh, you know, with the the size of the library they put at your fingertips, but. I think, David, we're both voted, motivated on how it impacts the culture because it impacts individual families and, and uh, gets them to start to applying the Bible to their life. That's going to obviously impact what they do in the culture. So it's a great way to get educated, folks. Check it out at uh, www.logos.com forward slash Wall Builders. Special thanks to Scott Lindsay for coming on and joining us today. Thank you for listening to Wall Builders Live. We stand on this.